In the latest round of attacks on Bitcoin, there has been increased criticism surrounding the energy used by miners to both secure and enable the network. In this video, I'll explain how so-called woke mobs are being misled and exploited by the corrupted media, sponsored by the mega-rich, in yet another attempt to push you away from your lifeboat of crypto and back into the sinking ship of fiat. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where it's time we cleared up the fake news that is being pumped through the mainstream media in the next round of disinformation designed to mislead the masses while taking advantage of the emotionally charged woke folk to ironically fight for the enemies they are supposed to despise. Now before we uncover this deception and move back to reality, don't forget to hit that like button if you get value from this video, subscribe if you're new, and share with your mates and family to ensure they are getting accurate and fair information from the crypto land. So by now, you've likely heard of the latest round of assaults on Bitcoin. First, they said it was money for drug dealers, gamers, and terrorists. Then, it was fake useless digital gold. Then it was rat poison squared, analogous to dealing baby brains. Then it was a speculative bubble, and finally, false allegations of a double spend taking place to falsely accuse Bitcoin of being broken. Now that all those attempts have failed, the next round of attacks is spreading misinformation on how catastrophic crypto is for the environment. According to some sources, it's now Bitcoin that is to be blamed as the primary cause of global warming. In a recent video I made called A Letter to All Crypto Holders, I warned the crypto community of the inevitable barrage of attacks we are yet to face as the corrupted coalition of the world's richest throw everything they have at Bitcoin in a futile attempt to maintain their clutch on their unearned power. A power that can only remain in effect if the fake money of fiat and its unlimited printing remains in place to ensure the mega rich have unlimited income at the cost of your savings being endlessly eroded through the invisible yet brutal tax of superinflation. Nearly five years ago, I invested heavily into crypto mining. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Sirecoin and Skycoin were all part of my mining journey. And I'm the first to say that absolutely yes, securing, maintaining and enabling an open, borderless, transparent, censorship resistant, all-inclusive and immutable internet of money that never sleeps uses way more electricity than running a light bulb or a kettle or a heater combined. The noise and heat ASIC miners produce is beyond anything one can really grasp until they've run their own mining operation of any scale. In the first three months of my mining operations, I ran an electricity bill that was in excess of $11,000 and in the big picture, I'm just a small drop in a massive mining pool. So in the next quarter, I innovated to reduce my electricity bill, hence increase my profits. A solar upgrade, better ventilation, more efficient machines and only running the miners during off-peak prices and maximum solar output meant a significantly lower power bill and greater profit ratios. In other words, the unadulterated fundamentals of the free market and hard money meant I had to innovate to survive. Now whether my motivation was to save the environment or make money, the outcome was identical. Find a more efficient way to make profits while contributing to a global financial network that cannot be corrupted by centralized third parties is available to everyone and never sleeps. To be clear, I acknowledge entirely that the mining associated with proof of work cryptos such as Bitcoin is a power hungry process. But this use of power is not a flaw, it's a feature. That is, not only does the scaling use of power, referred to in mining terms as difficulty, contribute to ensuring proof-of-work cryptos have a secure network and coin price, it also forces the complete opposite of what the global banking sector of the world fails to deliver to money and its users. And that is innovation. If you think that Bitcoin uses a lot of power to provide the most secure, 
fair, and inclusive payment system in the history of mankind. Just pause for a moment to consider the immeasurable catastrophic impact the current financial industry has been doing for years. To provide us with contrast, let's take the following into consideration before falling for the bank-sponsored propaganda that intends to trick you into fighting for the centralized financial systems that have been destroying both the environment and people for years with no incentive to make things better for anyone but themselves. Firstly, how much power do you think is needed to power a bank? Not just a bank branch, but the high rises and skyscrapers that accommodate millions of employees globally. Heating, cooling, lighting, computers, ATMs, and the mega power hungry servers and server rooms that store and transfer centralized corruptible data. Then you have the olden day manpower of the banks. How much fuel is burned every day by millions of employees globally commuting to and from these prehistoric power hungry structures? Structures that in themselves use immeasurable amounts of resources to not only run them, but build them, maintain them, upgrade them, clean them and fit them out. Next consider how much fuel is burned and trees cut down for customers to commute to a bank branch, fill out endless forms for something that can now be done through decentralized finance and taking days, weeks and even months longer than anything DeFi is capable of delivering right now. Then I ask you to think about how much power and resources are used for opulent banking conventions, boardroom perks, sponsored events and wasteful gifts of bribery during multi-billion dollar closed door deals for the 0.01 percenters at the top of the world's biggest pyramid, I mean Ponzi, I mean by decree financial scam we have ever seen. Which leads us to the devastating reality of the fake money of fiat behind the entire pyramid facade. Fake money that not only robs people of their time and energy through the constant value eroding effects of inflation, but also encourages the wasteful spending of money that should otherwise be saved. That is, we can see that when people have a money that constantly goes up in value, such as Bitcoin, they are more likely to save and less likely to waste on superficial crap that will end up in landfill within a few years, months, weeks, days, or even hours and minutes. Disposable and one-time use items that are churned through Earth at a catastrophic cost because too many people are understandably comfortable with getting rid of the dirty and forever deteriorating fiat is a factor that must be considered. Concurrently, when we accept a fraudulent fiat as our money, we provide a space for fractional reserve lending, quantitative easing, also known as money printing. Thus, we further promote a system of waste as people are encouraged to spend their money today or it will be worth much less tomorrow. In other words, fiat money encourages consumption and waste through the unethical and dishonest redistribution of wealth to the rich at the cost of the poor and the environment. The entire olden day banking mess is a disastrous cost to both the environment and the majority of the world's population. Not only does the banking system provide a substandard service to those who are fortunate enough to pay fees to it, but it also excludes more than two thirds of the world's population who are forced to fund it directly through the inflation that hurts everyone and indirectly through the environmental impact those at the top of the fiat facade dish out on the world through overconsumption, oversized homes, fuel guzzling yachts and planes, the real earth destroying mining operations and all of the bells and whistles that comes with access to unlimited and unreal money. Now let's compare this again to Bitcoin mining that needs a comparatively tiny percentage of the banking sector's infrastructure while non-discriminately offering its services to anyone in the world with a mobile phone or internet connection. Moreover, unlike banking, crypto mining is completely mobile. It doesn't need to be in a city center high-rise building or where there is no free power. That's right, the world does have free, excess and completely renewable power that forces miners as small as me to as big as the Chinese government 
to innovate and relocate to where their power is free or close to it. Dams, oceans, solar farms, wind fields, geothermal geysers and other emerging forms of renewable energy are constantly being explored and taken advantage of for the better in order to reduce the power costs involved with running an all-inclusive, decentralised, borderless, immutable, censorship resistant and fair internet of money. A money that discourages waste, encourages saving and strips power away from the most corrupt at the top while redistributing it to our most vulnerable at the bottom. Unlike the pompous, centralised banking sector that demands the biggest buildings within the most expensive real estate, a proof-of-work crypto mining farm can operate anywhere with a power supply and internet connection. Whether it be next to a remote dam or geyser where there is an abundance of endless and arguably free energy, the flexibility of crypto mining means that unlike banks, crypto miners can, will and do go to where the power is cheaper or even free, all the while reducing the infrastructure, power, maintenance and fit out demands of the olden day and utterly inefficient horse and cart financial system referred to as banks. So, the next time you hear someone parrot the misinformation campaigns that deny and deflect the real energy consumers of the financial sector, just keep in mind which financial network provides far more while using far less, and which financial institutions have been destroying money, value, time, and the environment to provide a substandard nine to four, five day a week service to less than a third of the world's population at a catastrophic cost to everyone. If you want to fight against a method of money that wastes not only energy, but everything that consumption brings with it, then Bitcoin is not your enemy. It is in fact our savior. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Shame on the banking sector. And I'll talk to you next time.